So a couple months ago, I reviewed the Fantech Helios 2 Pro and I had a couple gripes with the mouse. First being the coding. The coding on the mouse was just kind of slippery and was not fun to use for long gaming sessions. The clicks were also not very good. They kind of just feel cheap. And I actually tweeted at Fantech and told them that this mouse with better clicks and a better coding would be near perfect. And they kind of laughed at me, but then they reached out to send this mouse out for review. So I was kind of confused. Regardless, let's dive a little deeper into the main differences between this mouse, the Helios 2 Pro S and the Helios 2 Pro. As far as the shape, I already spoke on this in prior videos, but if you're a fan of the Zowie S2, then you will feel right at home with this mouse. If you're someone who enjoys steep rear humps, then you'll definitely appreciate this shape. I personally am not the biggest fan of this shape because it does cause me some cramping in my pinky and ring fingers, but this is a tried and true shape that many have loved for years now. Comparing it next to their last iteration, this is still one-to-one, -one, so don't expect any changes in shape if you're looking to upgrade to the Pro S version. As far as the coating, this thing has a standard rubberized coating. It feels very similar to something like the GPX2 coating. There's definitely no need for grips. It's a night and day difference between the old version. I'm so happy that they made this change. As far as longevity goes, I've had this for like two months and the coating still feels the exact same. I did get the white colorway and the white coatings tend to be grippier than black coatings, but I'm sure the black coating is fine as well. Overall, it was a well-needed change that Fantech beautifully executed. As far as build quality goes, there is still the same amount of side flex as the original, which tells me that they probably didn't rework the internal structure. This really is a non-issue though. It's pretty much unnoticeable unless you're gripping this thing like the Hulk, which in that case, you should probably seek therapy. Since there isn't much to say about the QC, this thing feels solid. This is easily one of the best implementations as far as build quality that I've seen out of China. But since there really isn't much to say about it, I'll quickly talk about the stock skates that came with this mouse. They're more than good enough to use. I really didn't feel the need to replace these. If I remember correctly, I didn't need to on the original either, but I chose to do so because I was on a Tiger Eyes V2 kick at the time, but there's really no need to replace the skates on either of these mice. They're pretty good stock skates. I don't have any problems with them. As far as the weight goes, the original copy I have is weighing in at 53 grams on my scale and the Pro S is weighing in at 56 grams. This can easily be attributed to the coding and the fact that I have dot skates on the old copy. They're essentially the same weight, and if you can feel the difference, bro, fuck off. The weight balancing on this mouse feels pretty flawless, so overall, I'm pretty happy with the 56 gram number. I didn't feel that the weight was hindering my performance whatsoever. My biggest problem with the last model was the clicks. I had very noticeable pre-travel, they didn't feel tactile, and overall, just didn't feel premium to me. Fantech did correct this in the best way possible. The clicks on the Pro S genuinely feel so good. The Huano blue shell pink dots they put in these feel fantastic. Let me just do a quick sound comparison because it really is a night and day difference. These are so much more spammable in Valorant and they are genuinely a joy to use. There is a tiny bit of pre-travel and pretty much no post-travel on my copy. The pre-travel is not noticeable while playing at all and compared to my old copy, the Pro S blows it out of the water. As far as click wobble goes, there is a tiny bit, but it's not something that affects the gaming experience either. The side buttons also feel great. There's pretty much no pre-travel or post-travel on these either and they feel relatively refined compared to the Pro version. I feel like on the Pro there was much more post-travel and they just didn't feel as tactile whereas they feel great on the Pro S. And then lastly, the scroll wheel feels like it has slightly more defined steps, but that could just be a unit to unit variance. I'm really not sure if they change anything there. It really is a breath of fresh air to see Fantech listening to the community and making these changes with the clicks. These are easily some of my favorite clicks that I've had on any mouse recently. So well done Fantech. As far as the sensor implementation goes, this does have a 3395 sensor that feels flawless in game. A lot of the sensor implementations from overseas have not felt the same as flagship mice like Razer, etc but I can confidently say that this feels exactly the same as the 3950s I've tried as of recent. Fantech did advertise this as an AK Hertz mouse, but the AK Hertz is only available in wired mode, which I personally never use because the battery life on this mouse is pretty good. I am clocking three to four days on 4K Hertz before needing to charge, which is excellent. I didn't have any wireless interference and the sensor felt very responsive. I don't have numbers on motion latency, so I'm sorry to all the latency nerds out there, but this sensor felt great in game. Tracking and micro adjustments felt very smooth and I performed well on this mouse when gaming in the BO6 beta, which is what I predominantly use this for. Overall, this mouse is one of my favorites of recent time, and that's saying something because I am not the biggest fan of the S2 shape. I think Fantech did a great job, and to see the difference between this and the original iteration is absolutely amazing. If you're looking for a lighter S2, then this mouse is for you. Time will tell if this mouse holds up from hours and hours of gaming, but it has served me well so far. It's super dope to see a company actually listening to the community and changing the concerns that the consumers had. We need 
need to see more of this. If you're in the market for a new mouse, this one is definitely worth checking out. I know this was a little bit shorter of a video, but I did already make a review of the original iteration. This is kind of just a refresh. So I hope y'all did enjoy and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.